Okay, so selling your gold might seem like a little bit of a traumatic topic and then having to choose just one single coin, that might seem like a horrible decision to have to make. But there are worse things in life and I think that we can get through it. So, figuring out the best gold coin to buy, that's a pretty common topic around here, but realistically, most people are just never gonna end up making a single choice and buy the same thing over and over and over again. You're not gonna stick only to American Gold Eagles because that can get a little bit boring. I can confirm that. So I thought it might be a little bit more interesting to flip the question of what the best coin to buy is and look at it instead from the angle of how I would sell down the coins that I have. I think that answers a few questions. It answers which is my favorite, or at least which one I'd hold on to if I could only have one. It also answers the question of which one I'd stack if I could only choose one or two. And there are a few more layers in this one too, so I just think this way it's a little bit more fun. There are a few caveats here. First, I just don't have all my coins in one place. I have a pretty good representation of the variety I have, but I can't show all my eagles or buffaloes at one time, so we're gonna improvise a little bit. There are also a few that I have here that really don't make much sense, objectively speaking, since I would just never sell them for sentimental reasons. That'd be like this ultra high relief year of the rooster coin that I was just given as a gift, because the value of this coin to me is not the metal content. I have a few coins like that. I think it's probably a good guess though that we all have a purchase or two that we're attached to for whatever personal reason. So I'm gonna keep a few of them in the list that aren't purely logical choices and I will let you know when we get to them. And then for the sake of making this easy to follow without getting into the specifics of personal holdings, we're gonna work backwards from a stack with a value of a little bit more than $100,000. Now, don't let that number throw you. I'm going to tell you why I picked that in a minute. And if this seems like a lot of details, don't worry. I'm going to explain this a little bit more as we go. So jumping into this one, what we're looking at here is a little bit of a grab bag of gold, like I mentioned. This is most of the variety I have. The volume is just a little bit off. So for the sake of this video, we're going to say that I have a tube of eagles. That's 20. Tube of buffaloes, that's another 20. Three more ounces of fractional eagles. Three Canadian maple leaves, two Britannias. I have the five US Mint high relief and ultra high relief commemorative coins. Then I've got these four Perth Mint Myths and Dragon series coins. And a few other things, a few Lunars and a Perth Mint Swan. So that's roughly 60 ounces or about $110,000 using $1,800 as the current spot price. And I know I've already mentioned this, so it's a little bit redundant, but on the desk right now, this is more like 28 or 29 ounces. We're missing 15 coins from both tubes. We're missing a Lunar and I think we're missing a Britannia. All these numbers can be pretty confusing though and sometimes distracting. If these were all one tenth ounce coins, that'd be about $12,000. The decisions would all be the same and that's the point of this video. So the reason that I went with 60 ounces is that a lot of the differences in these coins really comes out with scale. So I have more Eagles than Britannias for instance and there's a reason for that. In a one-off sale though of a single one ounce coin, the difference between that Eagle and the Britannia is just not that dramatic. I could get either one sold, I could sell them pretty quickly, but the decision is a lot more important when we're looking at potentially having to sell down 60 ounces of gold rather than just one. I would also be a lot less likely to buy some of these coins, let's say like this double Pichau, if I didn't already have a base of American Gold Eagles. So I think specifying an amount and the variety of gold within that stack is pretty necessary here. It definitely rounds out the story. So let's get into the scenarios here. If I ran into trouble, my minimum sale would be two or three ounces of gold. I would not sell a single coin, especially not a single fractional coin. I just have cash savings that would cover the small stuff. So for me to start selling, I'd need a more significant event. Let's just say that something unexpected came up and I wanted to get a hold of between five and $10,000 very quickly. And this is the easiest part. To me, this is far and away the easiest call. I'd grab the Britannias and the Canadian Maple Leafs and I would head straight to a coin shop. 
the key here would be that I would want this done quickly. So that's why I go local for sure. In my local shops, prefer the Maple Leafs by a pretty wide margin, but the Britannia is still well known. I would mix the coins together and I'd sell say two Canadian Maple Leafs and one Britannia to get me to $5,400, again, $1,800 spot price, or all three of my Maples and both of the Britannias, that would get me about $9,000. And I'd be mixing those two rather than selling the Britannias on their own for a very specific reason. That would help me get a better deal from the local dealers. Now, either way, three coins or five coins, I'm under $10,000, so this is just an easy sale. My local shops would give me spot for all five together. Now, this was an easy choice, but I'm not saying that I don't like these coins. I actually really do like both the Canadian Maple Leaf and the Britannia. But based on the stack that I have laid out here, they just happen to be the easiest and the cheapest to replace. They're also well known enough that I know I could sell them quickly. And in the event of an emergency, I can pretty quickly get past the fact that I like the way that these look. So that would be my first line of defense. I think kangaroos, philharmonics, and krugerrands would all be the same thing for me. I just happen to prefer maple leaves above all those other choices, but the other four would be about the same to me and my local shops. So with that first choice gone, my Canadian maple leaves and my Britannia is now out the door, the question of what to sell next starts to get a little bit more difficult. Yeah, I hate to say it, but the dragons would probably go next. And because I have all four of the Perth Mint Chinese Myths and Legends Dragon Series coins, I'd probably try to sell them all together in a single sale. I think I could get a little bit more that way. I've had offers for $9,000 for three of the coins, but in a pinch, I don't know that I could get that much. I don't know that I'd be able to move them quickly at all, so really I just want to have a little bit more time. And these are some of my absolute favorite coins. That's why I want more time. I think if I started early, I could probably move them for a pretty decent profit, but it'd be a totally different situation if I was down to the wire, I needed to sell them quickly, and I had to go to a local coin shop. That's why they would be next. I wouldn't want to hold on to them until the end and then find out that I'm stuck having to sell them to the local coin shop for spot. Okay, so my next step would be to sell my Lunars and they would actually be probably the hardest of all. I think I would definitely require some kind of package deal to sell them locally. If I was selling them online, really that's going to be hit or miss depending on which ones I'm selling. So let's just say that I had to take them into a local coin shop. I would hold back the Tiger, but then I would bring in my fractional gold Eagles and I'd sell them as a package deal. There's just no question that my local coin shops want those fractional Eagles. So this would be a way that I could get the most fair deal possible. Now, some of you don't have the local coin shop option at all, or some of you just might think the online dealers give a better deal. It's all really the same thing for me. I know locally I can get a fair deal and I know I can also get it with less time and less paperwork. They're a very similar idea though. Okay, so while I'm cleaning this up, let's just get a recap in here to help keep everything straight. I would sell my Canadian Maple Leafs and Britannias first. They're just easy to sell, but more importantly, they are easy to replace. Next up, I would sell my Dragons and that would hurt but I know that I might need more time to get a fair price for them. I would want to start early rather than finding out later that they're hard to move when that's all that I have left. Next up are the Lunars, and I think I'd be packaging them with fractional eagles to make sure that I can sell them locally for a fair price. And that's all except for the Tiger. I'd pull that one out. I'll get to that in a minute. So that leaves me with the Eagles, the Buffaloes, the U.S. Mint High Relief and Ultra High Relief coins, a Swan, and the tiger that I just mentioned. So the swan and the tiger are two of the best looking coins in the whole pile. They'll both be very difficult to replace as time goes on. So they would be very painful for me to sell. It's kind of the story here. They're all painful to sell, but they would be particularly hard. In the end though, it all has to go. So I would actually start moving buffaloes or eagles if I just needed to sell anywhere between say two and five coins. They're easier to replace. They're typically high premium though. That's why they're fourth on the list. Now I could sell them though 
one at a time, a few at a time, or all at once. I could sell all 40 of them if I wanted. I could also sell to whoever I want. Now, if I just want to sell a few, I could have them sold to a private buyer inside of a week. Absolutely no issue. If I had that bigger situation, though, and I really needed to get a hold of forty dollars or $50,000 more quickly, then I'd be talking to my local shops about selling a full tube or both. Now, locally, I just could not sell 20 random one-ounce coins in one sale, and at least not if I was expecting to get a fair price. But I could definitely sell a full tube of eagles, full tube of buffaloes, probably both of them in a single sale. And I think it's pretty safe to say there that the worst price that I would get would be spot. And that might not sound like a great price considering these are eagles and buffaloes, but it's pretty common to find out that you lose a little bit on price if you really want to move quickly. And normally I just would not sell eagles or buffaloes unless I was getting more than spot. But we'd be talking about a no hassle deal locally. You wouldn't have to worry about price negotiations, paperwork, delay for mail or inspections or waiting for your payment. It would be a single event, one and done. So you heard that right. I would sell the eagles and the buffaloes before I would sell the swan, the tiger, or the high relief liberties and that ultra high relief double eagle that I have. Now it's very important to mention that by the time I had those two tubes sold and anything before it, I'd have sold down all but seven ounces and that's almost 90% of my capital back out. And I think that I said that I was trying to ignore personal sentimentality, but I'd really like to hand down the tiger and the swan to my kids. And that's really important here. So the eagles, and the buffaloes, they would go before those two not because I think the swan or the tiger are a better choice. It's just that I have a plan for them. And that's not important to you. But what is, is that because I'd only get spot for them locally, I'd be losing a lot more on that sale than I would from selling a buffalo or an eagle. Okay, so next up, the swan and the tiger still have to go. I know that I just said I want to keep them for my kids, but I would sell them before I'd sell the U.S. Mint commemoratives. I can always find something else to give them. The bottom line though is that there's just more potential value in the US coins here. Now just being realistic, I know that my local shops would really only give me spot for any of these final coins that I have here other than the Mustang or the 2009 Ultra High Relief Double Eagle. And the reason for that is just that the Mustang is current. People are still trying to buy those and the Ultra High Relief Double Eagle is popular. I also think I'd have more luck finding private buyers for the U.S. coins than I would for the Perth Mint coins. So these would go, Swan would be out the door, then the Tiger, any or all of these three Liberties, and then the Mustang. And then finally, the very last coin that I would sell, so the last one that I would hold on to, would be the 2009 Ultra High Relief Double Eagle. Now this is all based off of my personal opinion here, but I think that I work off of logic far more than off of emotional attachment to any of these coins. Gold is an insurance policy, and if you run into a personal emergency, I'm sure the emotional attachment to any of these lovely coins will burn off pretty quickly. So to all those secondary questions of what would be the last coin you'd sell, what would be the coin you'd buy if you could only buy one single option and have to purchase it over and over and over, the 2009 Ultra High Relief, that is my final boss. And the Buffalo with American Eagle, that would be my choice for one single option. Hopefully, I'd have two. It would have been the Eagle up until last year, but I'd probably choose the Buffalo today. And I just think that there's a little bit here that you have to look at with 22 carat versus 24 carat. So ideally, I'd have both. Now, all of this varies regionally. And I do know that some people make selections from outside their region, maybe like Krugerrands because of their low acquisition cost. Britannia's would be similar. If that was my decision, Personally, I try to stack them at volume because uniformity does make quick sales easier. Now, there's a tax implication here and the time implication. So as long as you're selling fewer than 25 of those at a time, you don't have to worry about it. That's based on that extra paperwork and follow-up that you get with the 1099B form. That comes into play if you sell more than 25 ounces of Canadian Maple Leafs, Krugerrands, whatever, all at one time. And then the other thing that I'd say about variety here is that 
all of these random coins that we all buy simply because we like them or because we got a deal at the moment, I just say that I would want that variety to definitely be the minority of my stack. So that's my hypothetical plan. Let us know what you think. I'm curious in particular about what the last coin that you'd sell would be and then what you'd stack if you could only choose one or two options. Let us know in the comments. And while you're there, hit that like button if you found any of this interesting and then make sure you're subscribed if you'd like to see more on the topic. The topic, of course, is gold and precious metals. And if you're still here, thank you again for watching. I always appreciate your time. Take care.